so here we're going to talk about um, a, a, a research experiment called axelrods tournaments and these these tournaments were run by a uh, gentleman called Robert Axelrod torn torn uh, or, sorry, tournaments. Uh, these tournaments were run by a gentleman called uh, Robert Axrod in the 1980s. And what he essentially did was invite uh, anyone um, to submit computer code that played um, strategies for the iterated prison's dilemma. So played what happened when, um, when we play the prison's dilemma, but in a repeated manner. So... Um, I'll play C and then and then you'll play C and then um, because I see that you played C maybe I'll I'll play D you would you would still play C but now now you have played C twice so I'll go well I'll definitely defect now but you notice that I defect so maybe you start defecting again I apologize by C but you don't forgive me and we'll we'll keep on going like like that. Um, and we can, of course, encapsulate all of that into computer code and, and try and figure out what's the best strategy. So Robert Axelrod had a, a tournament um, where people submitted strategies. And the very first tournament he ran in the 1980s had uh, 15 different strategies. And so these are strategies for repeated game, right? So they, are, they, they take into account the entire history of play so far and they map to an action. And... Um, we also included, he also included a 16th player, just a player that just played randomly, completely just flipped the coin every time. And some of these strategies are very complicated. You know, they use chi-squared tests to try and figure out if the other player was playing randomly and something like that. Um, but the strategy that won is a strategy called tit-for-tat. And tit-for-tat simply repeats what the opponent does. Okay, so for example, um, looking at these two histories here, uh, this strategy is in fact playing tit for tat. It starts by cooperating and then it just plays the opponent's previous move. So using that rule, the next move would be a cooperate. And so in this very complicated uh, tournament with 16 strategies, every strategy played everyone else. They played for 200 turns, uh, tit for tat one. And um, this has been kind of used as an example of how cooperative behavior can emerge in society, biology, all these kind of things, because tit for tat fundamentally is a strategy that forgives. Um, if you uh, defect, but then start cooperating again, tit for tat forgives. And so tit for tat looks to cooperate. Um, things got a bit interesting after uh, this tournament with 16 strategies. Uh, they uh, Robert Axrod ran a tournament uh, quasi immediately, and that had 63 strategies in it. And Tit for tat won again, so no one was able to come up with something better than tit for tat. And in the literature, you know, that's often kind of said, you know, oh, like tit for tat's the best strategy, but that's not actually true. Um, this is a bit outside of the scope of the course, it's my own personal research interest, but um, tit for tat is good in a particular environment. Um, and in fact, uh, there's some recent work that, sh that, that finds better strategies depending on, on the environment. And so we're going to study uh, a particular type of strategy for um, the iterated prisoner's dilemma.